Great Britain, but Dr. Overton is has already agreed that people can take the intro to neuroscience class, which is a 300 level class. And what you'll do is you'll have a couple of online labs beforehand to kind of get some neuroanatomy that we would have normally done. So you can take those, you can wait and take them later on, but I'll have them available for you in the summer so you can get those out of the way. And then when we travel, we'll all go to the same places, but there'll be some assignments, like if we go to the Museum of Natural History, some people will have like a white, more wide open assignment and the neuro people will be more specific, or we might do some labs and the neuro people will be a little more focused. Um, and when you, the final project at the end, the people who are doing the neuro thing will write a neuro project. But um, I've done this traveling other times and it works really well. So it's it's pretty seamless because the the fun is all the traveling together and the visiting places and we do that as a as a group. Is Tom on there? Or not? He's not on here yet. Okay. So yeah. hi, who are you? I'm Sarah. Sarah, nice to meet you. And that name is familiar. Are you? What's your major? I'm um, business marketing. Oh, business marketing. Okay. I wonder why I've run across that that name before. Um, and hi, I'm Betsy Dobbins. Hi, I'm Molly. Molly? Yes. And what's your general idea of what you're going to do with your life? <laughs> oh, I would, I'm in nursing. Excellent. So, yeah. Yeah. But. That's, that's wonderful. Um, and so one of the things after you, um, talk here, you all also need to talk to your advisors and see how these things will fit. Because like nursing has to take humanities classes, it has to take social science classes, it has to take just some other classes so they would fit in. And a lot of nurses do a neuroscience minor, which is a great thing. And you can get your first um, class towards a minor. I don't want to, since I'm somebody that often arrives like right on time <laughs> before, I hate to start early and have people that are like me feel like that they're late. Sue, so are there any, while we're waiting, any questions or concerns or who has their passport already? Oh, yay. Yay, that's great. Um, and you have plenty of time now to get a passport for next fall. But if you're planning on going, go ahead and yeah. have it. Because while you do have plenty of time, remember, if you're accepted to the fall program, you have stuff to do starting in the spring. In yeah. fact, January, February, you will have to have your passport in your hand because you're going to get a visa for it. And we start that process in the spring because that's when we have everyone together. So when applications close on November 30th and we start making acceptances, we will actually ask you as part of that process to show us either your passport or a receipt that you have ordered it already. If you don't have either of those things and can show it to us, you won't be on the roster. Just because it's so vital that you have a passport and that you can get that visa in a timely way in the spring. Um, so that's important. And if you don't have one yet, is it true that you have to go directly to a passport office to register? Can you do it at a post office still? I think you can still do it at a post office. The one um, in Vestavia, I think that post office is still doing it. But the library in Vestavia, like the call the library in the woods or whatever, it's it's just kind of beyond the city center of Vestavia on down 31. That one there on the left, they have a nice um, passport office. But UAB also has a nice one. And it's not for UAB students. It's for anybody who walks in. So... Um, I would check that one out. I've heard great things that they're fast, that they're very competent, that it works really good. So UAB, because you also want to check that password. So those of you who raised your hand are like, yeah, I have it. Make sure it has validity through June of 2025. If it doesn't, right, if it expires in like March of 2025, it seems like, oh, that's so long away. It's not valid for, for these purposes, right? Because you have to have six months validity after your program ends, which will end in December of 2024, so check it, check it close. Basically, the Europeans are paranoid that Americans are gonna come <laughs> and, want to stay. and want to stay because we're gonna love it so much. And so they wanna make sure that our passport is good. They're not they wrong, they home. are not wrong. <laughs> They're like, we can send you home because if your passport expires, 
they won't accept you back into the U.S. So the Europeans are like, now nah, you've got to have plenty of time so we can get you home. <laughs> if you try and overstay your visa, we're going to find you, but we want to make sure we have time to find you and get you home. So yeah. it's really kind of funny. It's not about so much about the U.S. It's yeah. about yeah. their rules over there. But the airlines, because they know those rules, mm -hmm. sometimes won't let you board. And I was actually traveling a few years ago um, with one of the faculty members' wives was coming, and her passport was good for four months after the end of the trip, mm -hmm. but not six. And they wouldn't let her board the plane. She had to do an emergency passport in Atlanta the next day and catch the next plane out. So, yeah. Oh. I have, I have seen that in action and it was not pretty. <laughs> there were some tears involved. <laughs> um, but yeah. Well, we can go ahead and start. Yeah. Okay, so London, um, I see you are here because you're interested. London, have any of you been before? Oh, so you know it's an amazing city. And I guess it's so amazing you want to go back. Um, so those of you who have been, do you recognize what this bridge is? Or Tower Bridge. Oh, they're like, true like, Londoners. They know. Yeah, they not know. Like it's bridge. an iconic <laughs> bridge, and it's been there for centuries. It's like an, I've been an icon of the city for centuries. Um, and it's a great landmark uh, as you kind of learn your way along the embankment to figure out where you are. So here's where you'll stay, 12 Ashburn Gardens in Kensington. And... We are about a 20 minute walk from Kensington High Street. And so this is at the corner of Kensington High Street and Church Street. And Church Street is named that because it's got a lot of churches on it. And Kensington High Street is the shopping street, you know, all sorts of shopping. Um, and so really, this is such a fabulous location because Kensington is very safe. It's a beautiful area. It's filled with parks and quaint churches and shops. And here's what will be right here. And um, you can see that there it is the Gloucester Street tube station right there, another one there, another one there, Victoria and Albert Museum, the Natural History Museum. So the things that we are going to just walk to, we can walk out the door and go to them. Um, and this doesn't show it, but there's all sorts of, there's the Tesco Superstore, like all, everything you could ever need. Tesco, you will learn to love Tesco. Um, and then there are all sorts of cute little restaurants scattered around all through this area. Um, and then if you want to go fancier, you'll walk up to Kensington High Street. And if you walk up to Kensington High Street, which is right in here, you also, if you go straight north, you come to Kensington Palace and the Gardens, and these are just exquisite. It's amazing. Um, the Royal Albert Hall, which is a music hall, is right there, and then Buckingham Palace, and here we are. There's a tube station right here, and two stops away here at Buckingham Palace. One of my favorite markets is, y'all went, did you go to the Portobello? Isn't that fun? It's this amazing outdoor market. And it's a 45 minute walk or it's about 20 minutes by public transportation. And if you, if you like flowers, if you like food, if you like interesting new sights and smells, uh, Portobello Road is the place to go. I'm a borough market girl myself, but that's good. Excuse me? I'm a borough market girl myself. But that's oh, well, good. it's all right. There's, <laughs> there's some others. And there's all sorts of, as you can see, all sorts of green space and parks. And I am an inveterate walker. So I will probably, a couple times a week, unless it's really nasty, I will just post that I'm going to go for a walk. And if you're free and you want to walk someplace, especially the first time, you know, to see how it goes, just jump in. And if you don't want to come, that's absolutely fine. So there's going to be a lot of opportunities, but you, other than the classes, you don't have to do them all, the classes and the internship. So everybody has an international internship, which is a super cool opportunity. And in fact, somebody in one of my classes was talking about the other day, um, she went this summer. Do you know Emma mm -hmm. Barnsdale? Oh, yes. So she went this summer and she had this amazing experience. She did an internship at a healthcare 
And so it's a, it's actually uh, this, the class that I'm teaching this semester is the neurobiology of mental illness. And so she was talking about how people in England view healthcare and mental illness differently than we do in the States. And she would desperately love to go back there because she said it was just amazing. So you do that for 20 hours a week and you also do an international internship course, which is really, uh, I'm gonna lead it and my goal is to help you process that internship. It's not to make you write down everything you did, but just to think about where am I going in my life? How is this helping me? Is there anything weird that happened? Is there something like culturally different here? How can I process that? And so a lot of that you'll do journaling, some of it you'll do getting together and talking. Um, and then you can choose from these other classes, biology Great Britain, which is a general ed biology. So if you have to take a general education lab science that covers that. Um, if you're any kind of a um, science major, neuroscience, biology, biochemistry, you want to be a minor nursing, we will, um, we can use it to cover introduction to neuroscience. And then there's a British heritage and culture class, which I would highly recommend if you're going to be there, you might as well understand the context. And are we, are you still doing arts and society? Yes. Arts and society. So everybody needs that for their general ed. And but that then, last one, we've determined that there won't be a third choice this okay. time around, <laughs> just because we're kind of up against it. The, the faculty who should have been teaching BF for us got a full-time job. And so we, we, we just had to kind of drop that for, for this time. So, yeah. but the other um, three are, are great. So, so choose those. And you'll have really so much on your plate with a 20 hour a week internship and the accompanying course that you don't want more than two classes. You really don't. Every time somebody signs up for three or more classes at the Daniel House, they are sorry and they end up dropping. So really choosing- dropping one of them, not do, Yeah, dropping, not, <laughs> not leaving. No, no, they're not sorry about being there at all, but they're sorry about the course load. So, so pick two, just pick two. That would be the better idea. And I mean, theoretically, probably could do this. Okay, with two, but it would you would be staying up and going to the theater mm -hmm. and getting yeah. up early in the morning. Yeah. And it's so a lot. It really yeah, is a lot to try and do all three. So. Be a lot. But it's up to you. It really yeah. is. So I have that is all. I didn't want to spend a lot of time talking at you. I really wanted to give you all a lot of time to ask questions. And I'm going to pull up the um this is this wonderful Sanford in London, Sanford Abroad, May, Summer, Fall 2024. So it gives you all this information that you need. And here we are, Fall 2024, August 26th to December 12th. And it should be amazing. So what would you like to know? I have a question. So about the classes. So like you're taking you're doing the internship and then the one that was listed under it is mm -hmm. that you're yes. taking that. So then you choose two of the two other uh, two okay. additional yeah. classes. Okay. And that will make you full time because the internship course counts for six credits. And then each of those other courses are three to four credits. And so that, that makes you a full time student at 12, 12 plus. I will mention this, although I assume this is on almost everybody's radar, and it's on Molly's because we've already done it. You have to meet with me one-on-one -on -one to start the application for this program. That's only true of this program um, and, and affiliates, like if you do something independent outside of Sanford faculty. And the reason is we want to make sure you kind of have read an inter the internship agreement, that you've already you know kind of thought about what courses you're going to take, you understand how the application is going to work because it's just more complicated than signing up to go to Rome in May because um, you're going to get a faculty letter of recommendation and you're going to need to write a personal statement. So we have to talk through all of that. So if you scroll all the way down to the bottom, you'll see the apply now button. But all that is going to do is start an advising application. Um, so if you click, if you were, you don't have to, but if you're to click apply now, it will then um, ask you what term you'd have to log in, but it'll ask you a term and then it'll open an advising application and it'll explain there, go see Lackey. There's like a code that you'd have to get in there for that to be submitted, um, but it'll have an advising form for you to read. It'll have the international internship placement guide for you to read. 
and then an instruction saying, go talk to the advisor so you can get this approved. You obviously don't have to do that by next Friday. You have until November 30th to meet with me and get that application open. But they do open next Friday. And the sooner you have your application in, the better, really. So um, if you haven't scheduled anything with me, please do. And I know there's some students who are interested if you couldn't be here. Um, yeah, so this recording will get posted on there. If you have friends that are interested, you might want to watch this. Um, it'll be posted on there eventually. But um, you can also just reach out to either of us. Other questions? Um, how does it work with like costs? Like if you have like Sanford scholarships, will those transfer? Yes. Yeah, so one of the great things about Daniel House is that it's considered an extension of campus. So if you have Sanford aid or scholarships or federal, you know, any federal institutional aid transfers. Now, having said that, I would, if I were you, want to talk with my one stop advisor to be sure and to kind of know and to work through all of that and, and have that all in place. But the simple answer is yes. Um, so if you'll scroll down to our cost section, you'll see right there the cost sheet. This is a new feature that we just implemented this year. And you can see that there are billable amounts. That means exactly what we will charge you. Um, so it's the program fee, the tuition, your room and board. Tuition is based on what we will, you know, what would be charged here at Sanford. So it's exactly the same as what you would pay. Room and board are slightly more, obviously. Um, and we'll talk through all of this when you sit down with me in our advising session. But I did wanna point out that underneath there, there's this non-billable amount section. That's where you can estimate your own spending so that you get a full idea of what this is maybe going to cost. So these are things we would not bill you for. You might have different amounts to plug in than we've plugged in, but it's all interactive. And that will give you that total as well. So you notice that estimated airfare, they're buying their own airfare, correct? That is correct. Yeah. So but I will be flying over and I'm sure that it will it will start at a major destination. Yes. Probably Atlanta and fly over. And so you will know as soon as my ticket is bought, I will publish that information. So if you would like to fly with me, you can do that. Absolutely. But if you want to make your own arrangements, maybe you're going to be abroad in the summer anyway, and you just want to come to London from somewhere else, totally up to you. But you will have a day and time that you need to meet us at the airport to get transportation to the Daniel House. You don't have to do that either. If you want to just make your way to the Daniel House, that's fine. But again, you'll have a, a deadline by which you need to be there wherever you're coming from. And when I've done travel courses before, a lot of times students do travel with their families, but often they like to do it at the end. Mm -hmm. But in this one, since it's summertime before, people might be traveling before, and we will work that out with you. If you say, I'm flying back from Greece, we'll just say, please be here before this time. And if we know you're coming in, even if your plane is delayed, we will figure out a way to make sure that you get transportation. I mean, even if I wait at the airport, for you. I mean, I've done that before traveling with things, or we've gone in, like in, in Israel, we had to travel a long time and turned around the next day and I drove a van back down to pick up a couple of people who ended up being late. So our policy is leave no students. Right. <laughs> yes. Yeah, we are doing this to be like, ah, oh, you're on your own. We're definitely there to support you and help you. Um, although I do think it's a good skill for you to have to be able to, to book this yourself and do this. But yes, we're definitely here to help. Other questions? Yeah. How does the internship like placement process work? Yeah. How does how do those like credits apply to like whatever major? Right. Good. Two two really good questions. I'll take the second one first. Your advisor will have to help you with how it plugs into your degree and to your you know, requirements. Um, you know, so talk with them, and and that's actually a required part of the application. That course sheet that, um, or those courses that we were just talking about, you have to send it to your advisor. They need to sit down with you and talk through it, check off boxes, sign it. Like that whole process is part of the requirements. Um, Can I interject? Yeah. I, I know biology, environmental science, and neuroscience, and we have an internship class mm -hmm. and that counts towards your major or minor. And so, you know, if you're in those fields, and I know 
like sociology requires an internship. A yeah. lot of a lot of arts and sciences either require or have an internship. Environmental science they require an internship. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot. So this would take care of required internships. Yeah. And that's true of other colleges and other uh, yeah. majors as well. So yeah, I, I just can't speak to those, but yeah. I know that a lot of them. Yeah, I think business may be required to learn. And, and that speaks to that first question, right? Which is like, how does this, this get determined? Tom Crosby is the director of the Daniel House, along with Joe Burkhart. So you'll get to know both of their names really well. Um, and they are the ones who will be creating or finding your internship placements with your help. So they're going to ask you to write a cover letter. They're going to ask you for your resume. They're going to have you fill out this questionnaire through our application portal where you get to indicate this is my major. This is the field I want to go in. These are the kind of placements I want. And again, part of the advising application that you have to do is to read that placement guide where they go into lots of detail. Don't they, Molly? Have you read it yet? It's a lot of detail. Okay? <laughs> you can have this kind of internship, that kind of internship. We'll do this. We'll do that. They really do want you to be in. Uh, invested in it and give them input on it. So yeah, that's how it works. And honestly, an internship is the single best thing that you can do while you're in college yeah. in terms of figuring out who you are and what you like and what how you might interact with the working world. Yeah, which is what I really love about doing it this way because you know here on campus, I you know I don't know what all the different departments courses are like. But getting to do it in London, where you know you're with your faculty and residents, they know they you know you all are going to get to know each other so well, and you're doing this course where you get to reflect on this experience, and think about how it interacts with you know other interests in your life and who you are and your spiritual walk. Like I just think it's such an amazing way to do the internship. I think it can't be replaced. <laughs> it's really is all about vocation. Yeah, who you are and how you can serve in the world in a way that meets who you are and the needs of the world, yeah. which is super powerful. <laughs> Other questions for us today? Olivia, you look like you have a question. What to say? No, no. I'll you're Molly, right? Yes. I said Olivia. Yes. yes. Oh. Okay. Isn't there Olivia in here? No, that Olivia. Like... Yeah, that's my thought. But I was looking it's... back and forth because neither <laughs> like, you didn't respond, so I was like, okay, <laughs> there's Olivia. I'm there, you know, I missed that one. So, do you have a question? Okay. Okay. And what um are you an upper class I'm a junior? I just transferred here though. Oh, so this is my first semester. So oh, I feel like a freshman. Well, good Stanford. Yeah. Where'd you transfer from? Hold it. This is community college of all the Oh, well, I'm uh, just like my associate's degree from there. Oh, so I've now gone like straight into like a speech pathology. Yeah. Wow. Intense. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I work with a lot of transfer students, and I know some that have come from Wall State. They're great people. It's such a good school. It's But it is a bit of a difference coming to San Francisco. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah um, so, what, like, I'm a freshman. Yeah. So, would you say, like, being a sophomore year would be fine? Or, like, what would you, in terms of, like, what year? Sophomore year and junior year, but sophomore year is really a great time to do it because you kind of get some of your um, general ed done. And it really helps because if you go to London and you do that internship and you're like, yes, I, this is what I thought I wanted to do, it still gives you plenty of time to switch. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is a lot of people go to London and they get, yes, this is what I want to do, but I want to pick up a minor. Yeah. Or, you know, I want to I want to make sure that I fit more travel into the rest of my college career. And once you get out, if you take a full time job, your time is more constrained, to be honest. And so, oh, yeah. you know, doing travel and especially doing travel with a bunch of people that you enjoy mm -hmm. um, is is just more challenging. So I would encourage you to do it. It's People do it their junior year. They do it their senior year. I mean, there's a wide range, but sophomore year is really a great time to do it. And a lot of people think, oh, 
I'm a freshman now, but yeah, that's you, what it is. <laughs> you will be a sophomore next yeah. year. And just think of it as a really great exploration of what you've done so far and then how to kind of open up the rest of your college experience. And I'm sorry, did you have a... I agree. <laughs> <laughs> what she said. <laughs> and Paris, how long does it take to get oh, to Paris? Oh, like a couple hours by train. Boom, you're there. Channel. <laughs> <laughs> and you will have, they have one travel for uh one travel weekend a couple travel weekends oh no you're actually free to travel any weekend except for a couple that are are no travel weekends because maybe midterms are that next week or you know there's there's an event happening um otherwise you're, you're free to travel on the weekends um tom does kind of like to know people's travel plans just so we can you know, kind of again be supportive um but yeah you're you're free to travel um on, on those weekends. They will also take you to Wales one weekend. So you'll get to do that excursion as a group um, at some point, probably in October. They may be going right now. I think oh. this might be the Priscilla weekend. Oh, cool. So anyway, yeah, you'll get you'll get that included. So yeah. And we had I had one student who's now in my fall cadre, because I do a cadre for re-entry students. Um, and she was there last spring and I think she traveled 12 out of the 15 weekends. Like she went to 12 different cities wow. while she was there. So it was insane. And there's some amazing places you can get to in just a few hours on the train. It's just travel is so easy in Europe. I plan on going up and seeing Hadrian's Wall, which I've never seen. Oh, before. I've never seen it either. Oh, I have friends that live in York, so I'm planning on going oh, to York right. and I'm hoping to, to make it to Scotland. So Edinburgh is one of my favorite places when I was there. <laughs> Questions, comments? Yes. Will we get like the same breaks as Sanford to like go and travel or will it be like different? It will be different, okay. right? Because there's no Thanksgiving mm -hmm. um, in the UK. <laughs> that makes it sound like they're just really cranky people. I'm sure they're thankful for all kinds of things. There's no Thanksgiving holiday in November. So that week you'll actually just be working and doing classes like, like normal. Um, but there will be an extended fall break. So you'll have the whole week off for fall break instead to kind of make up for that. So, so we'll be different. Yeah. yeah you see that would actually be if your family wanted to come over right. sometime, that would be yeah. an optimal time. That fall break is the best time. Because yeah, it's still lovely and the prices are less expensive than high season in August. Yeah. Family or a friend. Or, yeah. Because because I will say this when we meet, if, if you meet with me, but attendance policy is much more strict while you're there than it might be here on Sanford's campus, right? Here, if you're like, oh, you know, I, my sister's wedding is happening. So I'm going to take these three days and just go and not you know, be for in class. That kind of excuse cannot count for your coursework um, while you're there. Because if you get a visa, we're reporting your attendance to the UK government. And so don't schedule travel until you are sure you are not supposed to be uh, in a required class um, or anything like that. And obviously, if you're just too sick to get out of bed, that's fine. We're not talking about that. But there won't be excused absences just because your parents are like, hey, we can only come the first weekend of November. So we're coming and taking you around Europe for a week. Can't work. So tell your siblings to get married in the game. Where yes. During the break. <laughs> right. <laughs> yes. Because we've had people want to fly back to the States because there's some big family, you know, occasion happening and it's really difficult. So just keep that all in mind. I mean, it, it would be doable during the fall break. We've had people do expensive. it. Yeah, we've had people do it. We've had, you know, we'll, we will definitely work with you on all that kind of stuff, but you just do need to know that we have to track attendance to keep you in compliance with your visa. That's serious. And I, I, um, I'm married and I have two sons, but they're both uh, adults. One is in um, down in Pensacola, he graduated just a little while ago and then he went to officer training officer training school and now he's down in Pensacola waiting to fly jets. My other son is a couple of years older and he um, moved back in with us during COVID and still mm -hmm. living with us and he works at, at Jeff State. Um, but my husband may come for a couple of weeks here and there, but I'm going to be there <laughs> solo most of the time. So just there for y'all when you need me. And um, 
Anything else? Well, I'm I'm Dr. Dobbins, and my um, and I know this is on. So this is my office phone, Sanford email, so that's at Sanford, right? And this is my cell. So if you have a question and you want to just text me quickly, um, you are welcome to do that. I will tell you that I turn my cell phone off. I mean, I have that sleep app. So if you're texting me at 1030 or 11 at night, I'm not going to respond <laughs> until the five <laughs> Great. Well, thank you again for coming. Yeah, no, thanks. I look I look forward to traveling with y'all. I think you'll continue. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.